So that's a, it's, it's a good question. Uh, maybe John would be the one to answer this, but like, what do you think about making sure that your, the, your webinar that you're putting time and energy and, and money and effort into, uh, making sure that the content is quote unquote evergreen or at least can live on the shelf for a while as opposed to something that's like very timely, only relevant for the next couple months. And then it's like next year it's worthless to anyone because yeah. it's a, a date or something has passed. Like, is that still worth it if that's yeah. the case? So I would... Uh, well, two things that popped up. I would, n- I would stay away from the pretending to be evergreen. So, like the the stuff that it looks like it's a webinar. You're signing up for a time to watch it, but it's actually a recorded thing that you're watching. Only the company is trying to show you. They they want you to think you're at a live webinar, but it's really not. It's very deceptive. Do people do that uh, all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, especially so what you see on like Facebook. A lot of people are like, you have to sign up for this awesome course. You're gonna love it and pick your time. But it's actually like the guys did it last year. Yeah. Um, where I think it's it's beneficial is when you make them. Like just call them on demand, like use terminology that people are used to. So you have on demand on your cable and you record a show or you want to watch something on demand that was from last week's you know episode. And so put it a, a section on your website of on demand webinars and say this webinar was from April of 2019 and this was the topic. And so, yeah, you'll probably have stuff that's very timely and very time sensitive. Doesn't mean the content is going to be 100 percent irrelevant. It so, gives you an so, out. Yeah. It's like you're being transparent about it. I like that. Yeah. And you gate it. I would still gate it. So Absolutely. people have to sign up. Absolutely. Uh, and, and actually, so so what uh, another direction for what Tim was saying about uh, whether the content should necessarily be evergreen or if it should be more like timely topical stuff. Mm-hmm. I think there's very much a place for both of those things. Right. Uh, they just need to be deployed in different ways. So if you are going to record a webinar that you then want to live on your site for a while, right? You, you want it to be, you know, so like tips for running a webinar, that's Mm -hmm. kind of evergreen, at least technology will change and such, but the basic presentation Mm -hmm. tips will stay the same. That's reasonably evergreen. We could gate that. However, there are also a lot, you can get a lot of attention, a lot of visibility, a lot of traffic, a lot of engagement from having things that are more uh, more immediate. We mm-hmm. had a client, uh, and actually they didn't end up doing a webinar, which I disagreed with them about, but they're, in, <laughs> they're still disagree with them about that. Yeah. But they had a, and uh, they were in an industry that was going to be seriously affected by the sun setting of the Windows phone. Uh, Interesting. They're in an industry that the Windows phone is is very is like the standard field mm-hmm. device, which okay, that's <laughs> random. Mm-hmm. Uh, Learn something every day. <laughs> but Microsoft had announced they were no longer going to support. Uh, I don't know if it's the whole thing. I don't really follow the Windows phone or whatever it is that yeah. the industry needs. And so when they were going to do a webinar, one of the ideas was what you need to know to 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 survive this oh yeah this loss of tech right mm-hmm. and that's you know that would have no, been a great webinar right yep nope right yeah yeah it been a uh, great webinar nobody wants to watch a webinar in 2019 on preparing for y2k right right yeah mm-hmm. unless it's but, a documentary 